Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, and in this short review, I'm going to have a look at this Data Color Spider Monitor Calibrator. This is the Spider X2 Ultra. Uh, this one supports very high brightness screens, HDR, various other things. I'm not going to test that here. I'm going to look at it just as a basic monitor calibrator. Um, there are other models available. There are lots of monitor calibrators available. Why am I looking at this one? Well, um, I've actually looked at data color stuff um, for quite a few years. In fact, have reviews back on the Northlight site uh, of every single monitor calibrator they, in, they've produced in the Spider range and goes back quite a while. Um, this one uses uh, it's a USB device, plugs in the back. Um, you run the software, you have to register the software with it. Uh, give, there's a serial number in the box. Uh, it has a USB-C uh, connector on it, but it does come with a USB-C to USB-A adapter, which is good using it on this oldish iMac here. Now, I'm going to do a very specific calibration here that shows you the general principle of how you calibrate monitors. But what I'm going to do is calibrate this monitor, which is, uh, this is a default Mac display um, on an oldish uh, iMac. This is probably about 66, 6500K uh, color temperature. Now, because I've got roughly 4K lighting in the room here, and this BenQ monitor here, which is a hardware calibrated monitor, um, because this one is set to 4000, the lighting's 4000, uh, it should match quite nicely the screen and the print here. Um, in fact, I've set it up deliberately, everything at 4K, to make it look good on video. Now, if you were editing, normally you wouldn't use uh, 4000. It's very warm looking. Um, well, it's very warm looking if you're not used to it. But here, it doesn't look too bad because my eyesight is adapted to it. Now, I'm, I did some stuff about adaption uh, and different color temperatures when I looked at this, the Ilfalux uh, print viewing lamp recently, uh, looking at different colors. But this screen at the moment is set up at its default of 6500. I'm going to calibrate this to 4000 and then we're going to see how it compares to this hardware calibrated one. Obviously it, this is about how it looks on the video. So uh, I'm going to fire the software up. Now I've plugged the device in. Um, there are all kinds of monitoring software you can use. You can get it to measure the ambient lighting. All of these features I turn off. I never use them. Equally well, I don't use the reminder to remind me to calibrate every so often. I just calibrate as and when I need it and, and change things. Um, yeah, every few months is fine for this. If you're in a graphics design studio and you're doing a lot of color critical work, then sure, you might want to calibrate your monitors every week just to be sure of it. But for normal people, no, you don't need to do it that often. But there is a reminder, and the good thing is you can turn off the reminder here as well. Um, a little sort of startup screen that reminds you to let you to uh, that your screen is up to temperature. Now you think up to temperature, it's it's an LCD screen. It comes on just like that. Yes, it does, but the backlighting and the performance of monitors does change a bit as they reach working temperature. So it's worthwhile when you're doing your calibration, not to switch the computer on and to straight away do the calibration, but leave it for quarter of an hour, half an hour doing something, and then do the calibration. Uh, you don't really want any bright light shining on it. Now, I've got no lights specifically shining on the here. I've got some lights at the top here, which sh are not really bright enough to cause any problems. Um, you don't need to adjust this specially. Uh, just make sure there's no bright light on the screen. Um, display controls, I've just got a brightness control on this one here. I've reduced the brightness so it's about right for what I'm shooting here. You might choose in the settings to pick a specific value, say 100 candelas per square meter or 120, or even if you're working in relatively low brightness, only 90. Um, 
Having your screen too bright is a great way of having your prints come out too dark because with a bright screen you edit it with fairly open shadows because the screen's bright, the whole screen's bright. Then when you print the dynamic range is compressed and where it really shows up is shadow detail and your prints come out too dark. In fact the most common reason for a monitor for prints coming out too dark is that your monitor's too bright. Reduce the brightness of the monitor. If the monitor is then too dim to use in the uh, in where you are, then you're probably working in too bright a lit environment. For editing, this is for print. For general use, have whatever you feel like. But if you're editing for print, it really does help if you pay a bit of attention to your lighting environment and how you got things set up. Anyway, I'm just going to continue on here. It, it's plugged in. Now I'm going to do the simple options here. Um, I've got a calibrate of display. There are uh, settings on this. This is offers stuff that can help with soft proofing. Now I'm not going to have a look at that one in this. Um, I'll come back to that feature at some other. This is just about the basics of profiling. You profile and calibrate. Profiling and calibration, are they the same? No. Profiling is evaluating the characteristics of the display. Calibrating is then setting it to a known state. If you know the characteristics and it's set to a known state, that means that your software, which is driving the screen, uh, has a better chance of giving an accurate display. Um, that's what it's about. It's not about getting correct color or anything like that. It's about getting a better display that's better. Now, there are measurement options in this, which I'll just touch on at the end of things, which allow you to check the performance of your monitor. But don't get too worried by those because if you find that your monitor has some failing in some minor area what are you going to do get a change it and get a new monitor or are you going to worry about it no just don't bother about it um, if the monitor looks good accept it now if you're doing this commercially once again you need quality but then you pay for that so let's go but anyway i'm just going to go and calibrate my display option here Basic options I've got. I've got a display analysis section at the end here. This is the bit where you can get it to do various measurements and it will do pretty graphs and stuff. Now, if you like stuff like this, well, it'll keep you, keep you busy. You can look at it. I'm not going to say the, the results are necessarily going to be of any great value to you, but if you like tinkering with stuff, it's there. Um, there's a user guide available, um, data color. Um, ever since I first tested their stuff, I've always said data color does very good user support. The software is designed, it gives you a lot of help. Um, so I'm just going to go on the basic display calibration next. Now I've got settings here. Um, I can change the type of computer. It doesn't really matter this much, but do check the user guide for this. I've got it set to a standard LED. Uh, this is not a wide gamut monitor. This is probably around about sRGB gamut. So it's not a wide gamut monitor like this one here. This is an Adobe 98 monitor. So it's, it's quite different. So I've set that for the standard LED. And if I need to set adjustments, I've told it that I've got a brightness control adjustment. Now the brightness control, I can actually control from the keyboard here and change it. Um, if you're setting something to a precise value and are concerned about it, you might want to deactivate that because then you can just, you will almost certainly at some point accidentally change the brightness of the monitor. Um, but doesn't really matter in this instance. All I'm looking at, this is how to do 4000K setting for this screen so that it works for this video setup. Now, next. We've got some options here. I can set what, um, I can either go for a, um, a, a complete sort of set every option here. So set the color temperature, set the gamma. Gamma you don't really need to worry about. Um, leave it at 2.2. Uh, if you know any good reason why you shouldn't be using 2.2, use that. Um, like most of these bits of software, the defaults are what you should probably start with. Um, this one's going to default to 6500. Now, I don't really want to calibrate this to 6500 because that won't match the uh, video set up here. I have set this one to 6500 and it is noticeably better than the default setting. So you might think, well, I don't need a particularly strong setting like this one at 4000. I just want a basic setting. Yeah, 
it makes it better. There's quite a distinct difference you can see in the image, before and after image, between the uncalibrated state of the monitor and the calibrated state of the monitor. That's at 65. Now I've got options here. I can do a calibration check. I can do a full calibration which is what I'm going to do here. Now I've got Gamma 2.2, white point. It says 6500 recommended. Yep, that's fine. But we don't want 6500. Now this one here, I've got an option of 4000. Now I've not seen 4000 on other monitor calibration software apart from the hardware calibration software, which is the one you should use, although you could use this device, which you should use when calibrating a monitor like this, like this BenQ one. So I'm going to select 4000. Brightness, I don't want to adjust it. I've turned off the room light checking, which is uh, this little sensor at the top of the device here, measure the room, ambient room lighting. Um, I don't know what the ambient lighting is. I'm not concerned with that. I'm just going to do the standard faster recommended selection for this. So I'm just going to run this. I've got it set for 4000. Next. This is what you do with all of these devices. Uh, see the, the base here that it clips on? There's the that's the lens that uh, for the measurement device. Uh, the base, which keeps it clean in normal use, it does have a tripod setting, uh, tripod uh, connector on it here. So you can use this for um, pointing at screens, at projected screens. Put that, the, the bit weight works as a counterweight at the back and it just lays there. I've tilted the screen slightly backwards just so it's laying on the screen. It is uh, fairly soft, so it won't cause damage to screens, but do be careful with it when you're putting stuff on screens. And all I need to do is just click on that. And it will now go through the phases that uh, all monitor calibrators do. It says 76 steps. You can change different options here. There are all kinds of options you can do. But I've always had a feeling that these are for people who like tinkering with things um, rather than getting on with doing some actual work. Um, it's a great way of wasting time. If you've got a morning to waste and um, you don't feel like doing any actual work, explore all the calibration options for your screen. You probably won't get anything any better of it, but you, know, you may well have learned a bit about colour management and you'll have some nice charts and graphs to, uh, to look at afterwards. Here we are. It's up to, as you can see, the colours, they're changing through. Now, I'm not entirely sure how these colours are going to appear on the video, but um, it's running through a full set. We're up to 55. It's quite quick. Um, I'm certainly on if I do a hardware calibration on this particular monitor it could take seven or eight minutes easily it can do, take quite a lot longer but this is a much more expensive high-end monitor than the screen on this uh, there we go it's set it I can see that it's gone to a warmer look to it uh, or I should say, and it's beeped it tells me it's done now I can see from the monitor on the camera here that it is looking much whiter than it was when it was done. Now, a colour checker card there, so we can, this is a video one, so I can use this for uh, testing for when I do white balance on the video. Uh, we'll finish that, there we go, we don't need that anymore. So I've got Apple. You can name your profile, you can give it, I would suggest if you're going to do stuff like this, you give it a simple name that reminds you that this is the profile for 4,000. You might have another one for, for 6,500. So I'll have a calibrated profile for this, so that's so that this looks okay on the video, and I'll have another one for 6,500 for if I'm actually using this iMac for anything. This is running to, uh, Mac OS 13 Ventura. Um, it is purely, it's not a very fast machine, certainly not running Ventura, it isn't. It is purely set up so I can test current Mac systems. Uh, my other Mac systems run older systems. They work, there's nothing wrong with them. I'm not updating them until I finally, eventually get new computer perhaps. Anyway, when do I want to calibrate? Let's just give this a name. Um, if I just put iMac 4000, that will just remind me that it's, yeah. Um, save that. I don't want the calibration. It's been, profile's been saved. I go to the next stage and this is where I get an option to see the before and after. Now I'm going to switch this to full screen so it's a bit more visible in the video. 
There we go. It's just telling me I can press the space bar. Now, that is the calibrated view. That is a screen calibrated at 4000. This one here is also calibrated at 4000. Now, I'm not sure I haven't adjusted the brightnesses or anything. Um, and there is a, um, a print of the old version of this one. This, this is the one that I have. This is an old version of the data color image. This is the one I have for, available for download as a test image on the North Light Images website. Um, data color gave me permission years ago when I did some testing to host this image. And I know it's been downloaded thousands of times. Uh, this is the slightly newer version. There's, uh, I think the only difference in this particular one is this panel here, the lady here is there so there's not much difference in it most of the panels are the same so that's the standard test image i use there it is at 4000 on a hardware calibrated monitor here it is at 4000 on an imac now didn't think i could get this to 4000 it doesn't look at all bad if i press the space bar we can see the uncalibrated version which if you consider and i will double check on this uh, this here that everything's okay but yeah there we have it um i've calibrated it right a few more little quick notes on things you can do let's just put it back to calibrated press escape there we're okay um i could now go to checking uh details i can do further checks it gives me an overview here of the measured details for it tells me that it's achieved quite a good calibration for it now i might want this actually a little brighter let's have that and this is this is purely a bit of a cludge to match it onto the video or maybe not a little bit. I, I will have to check and see what the settings are when I come to editing the video I've just set this one up I can compare this and I can see that the gamut of this monitor is slightly larger than sRGB only slightly uh, this particular monitor, this is a wide gamut monitor. This is Adobe 98, so, you know, as I say, a much higher quality monitor. Um, but I've now got them fairly similar. I could, if I wanted, if I had this monitor plugged into this, there is an option with this software to try and bring the monitors closer to each other. One thing I'd always say for that, though, is remember that one monitor may be much better than another. So basically, if you've got this monitor plugged into this computer here, I would accept that this screen is going to be um, a bit less capable than this one. Now, given the difference, this is um, sRGB and this is Adobe 98 virtually. Um, this is the one you'd work on. You would not trust this one as much but this does allow you to try and match this in terms of brightness and things like that but that's how you would set that up so that's all the options there uh, once again i say there's a user guide at the top there um, i can go to further calibrations um, or i can just decide it's done um, and there it is it's that simple to calibrate a monitor now i've made it a bit complex for myself just because i'm trying to match it to the lighting in the room here but for ordinary setting bang you just put it in off you go and you don't need to leave this plugged in when you're not using it as i said the software for this the benq software as far as i know it certainly supports the spider x um, I don't know if it's updated to work with the Spider X2, but you can do that. So you can all, all the stuff you can do on that. So loads of adjustments and things. Now, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Let me just have a bit of light. Now, this is a, the viewing light that I was testing the other day. And this I've got set to 4000. Now, this will be a bit bright here, I imagine. I don't know. Let's see what it comes out like on the video. But that's set to 4,000. Hopefully the lighting round here is 4,000. That's 4,000. That's 4,000. And there you go. That's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Um, if you found it interesting, please do subscribe to the channel because I do quite a lot of stuff like this. And um, that's it. Monitor calibration. It's not that difficult. Um, thanks for watching.